Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Hey everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. Today we're gonna get in that kitchen and we're gonna make pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Have you ever had them before? If you never had them before, you are in for a treat because they are absolutely amazing. They scream fall time. They're packed with fall time flavors. Do not require a lot of ingredients and listen here, they taste so good. Here's what you're gonna need to make, Gina Young style pumpkin cinnamon rolls. You all never had these before. You better make you some. Okay, everybody, happy Saturday to each and every one of you. I hope that you all are having a beautiful, blessed weekend. Let's get in this kitchen. Let's make some pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Here's what you will need. You're gonna need all-purpose flour, Smucker's caramel, you will need the zest of an orange. I happen to have a mandarin orange that I'm going to zest, which would be just fine. You will need pumpkin puree. You want to make sure that you do not go out and purchase pumpkin pie filling. Make sure that it says 100% pumpkin puree. You're gonna need ground cinnamon, as well as pure vanilla. We're gonna need some ground ginger and nutmeg, those are the fall spices. That's gonna give you that fall time filling. You're gonna need some white chocolate chips, and you're gonna need instant dry yeast. And out of the instant dry yeast, you're gonna use two and a half teaspoons of this, okay? Now the other ingredients that you will need, you're gonna need powdered sugar, brown sugar, you're gonna need salted butter. Make sure you invest in real butter. We're not using margarine today, okay? And you're gonna need Philadelphia cream cheese as well as some warm milk. This recipe couldn't be more easy. I want you all to make this recipe and let me know what you think about this. This is definitely a recipe that you wanna put on your family's dinner table for the holidays. Absolutely. And you know, honestly, it doesn't have to be a holiday. It can be a birthday, it can be the weekend. Just make these bad boys and you will not be let down. Trust me when I tell you this. Let's make our way over to the counter and we're gonna start to make up our dough because the dough has to rise for at least an hour. And while our dough is rising, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make the really quick and simple, yet so tasty filling. And then I'm gonna show you how to whip up a really quick and simple, yet so tasty icing as well. Okay, everyone, so let's get started making this really quick and simple dough. You're gonna need two and a half teaspoons of the instant dry yeast. You're gonna need a half a cup of warm milk. You wanna make sure that your milk is lukewarm. You know, you don't want it too hot and you don't want it boiling. The reason why is if because you put too hot of milk in with this yeast, you'll kill the yeast and you want this yeast to stay active, okay? So you're gonna need one cup of pumpkin puree one fourth cup of softened butter, salted softened butter, one large egg, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and three and a half to four cups of flour. And it's just all purpose flour that we're gonna use. So now, and you can see in the mixer, I have the two and a half teaspoons of the instant dry yeasts. And here's how I measured it, okay? So then let's go ahead and put our warm milk in. Okay, I'm gonna heat this milk up and I'm not gonna heat it up long, maybe for 20 seconds. Okay, I've heated the milk up for just 20 seconds. It's not hot, it's just nice and warm. Okay, so let's go ahead, put your half a cup of milk in with your dry yeast, your instant yeast. Just gonna give it a little mix around just like this. You don't need to get crazy with it because it'll activate on its own. Okay, now we're gonna put in a half cup of, or I'm sorry, we're gonna put in one cup of pumpkin puree, just like so. 
Now somebody had asked me in one of the comments, I don't like pumpkin, Gina, can I use sweet potato puree? Absolutely you can, just make sure that you do not get pumpkin pie filling, just use pure sweet potato puree and it should be just fine. Absolutely you can. Okay, so now that we have that one cup in with the yeast and the warm milk, now we're gonna put our brown sugar in. Get your brown sugar in. And then I was able to purchase one fourth, see these are already made out, Lando Lakes makes um, the little tiny already pre-measured one fourth cups, which is amazing. So all I had to do was just set this on the counter so it can get nice and softened and room temperature. I think this is the cutest thing. One fourth cup already measured out for you. I set it out this morning so it could get room temperature. Okay, now we're going to put our salt in. You want to use the salt. The salt brings out the beautiful flavors in your desserts. And this is one fourth cup, or your one fourth teaspoon of salt. Now we're going to put our egg in. Just one large egg, just like so. This dough couldn't be more easier. You all can make it as well. I'm gonna to start to go in, and I can see that my yeast is getting real active and it's starting to bubble around and get nice and frothy as it should. So now I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna mix it up just a little, okay? And it's gonna be on a slow, just really slow. And then I'm gonna to start to add half of the flour in because if you put it all in right now, what will happen is you're going to get a big poof of flour in your face and that won't be good. <laughs> so put a little bit in and make sure you use the dough hook when you're making dough. Okay, this flour has not been sifted. You don't have to worry about sifting your flour. Okay, let's start this on a low speed and then we'll add the rest. The reason why I like to say three and a half cups to four cups is because if your dough is a little too sticky, go ahead and put that extra half cup in and make it four cups. Either or is gonna be amazing, okay? So now we're gonna start this, get it going a little bit, and then we'll add the rest of the flour and we'll see if we're gonna need that extra half of a cup. Okay, you can see that I put the rest of the flour in just like so. And what you're looking for when you're making a dough, at least this dough, you're waiting for everything to form into a ball onto the hook and for the mixture to come off of the sides of this bowl. Okay, and that will happen really quickly. And then from there, your dough is done. There's no kneading necessary. I'm going to turn the um, speed up just a little bit. You can see everything starting to form into the ball as it should. And it's gonna pull away from the sides and then you know you have that perfect dough. Okay, so what I feel like, I feel like my dough is a little bit sticky. I'm not gonna put this whole half a cup in, but you better believe I'm gonna put a little bit in there. Just a little bit will do me. Okay, I just want my dough not to be so sticky. Okay? So that right there is going to do the trick. You see how much is left? You don't need to use all of it. Okay, we're going to turn it back on just like so. Let that dough pick up that extra flour and you're going to have the perfect dough. Beautiful. It's pulling away from the bowl. We're going to take this out and we're going to set it into a clear bowl that has been greased lightly with vegetable oil. Okay, you can see how the ball all of the dough has came together. It's on the hook. It's into a bowl and it's pulled away from the sides. Let's get our bowl. Let's lightly grease it with vegetable oil. Okay, everyone. I've put my bowl of dough onto a clean counter. Now I'm going to take some paper towel and I just want to lightly oil a bowl. Okay? I always prefer to use my glass bowl. You can use whatever bowl you'd like to use. Okay. 
So now you wanna oil it because you don't want for your dough to stick to the bowl. Really quick and simple. So you take it, beautiful dough. Look, it couldn't be any beautiful. Beautiful, okay? Just kind of roll it into a nice ball, just like so. No kneading, we're not kneading this. And you take it and get a little bit oily on each side, okay? And now we're gonna let it rest. This has to rest for at least an hour. If you don't rest it for an hour, you won't have uh, pumpkin cinnamon rolls that are nice and fluffy. Okay, so this is just a kitchen towel we're gonna put on top. And you can set this under a nice, under a cabinet. You can set this in the oven that has not been on. You can just set this on top of your refrigerator, just somewhere nice and quiet, and that doesn't have any drafts so that this can rise. And next I'm gonna show you how to make this really quick and simple, yet so tasty filling. Okay everyone, time to make our quick filling. We're gonna use a half a cup of salted butter. Make sure your butter is salted. If you don't want to use salted, then that's fine. But I highly suggest that it's salted, okay? So then you want to put one cup of packed brown sugar in. I don't like to use the dark brown sugar. I always like to use the light brown sugar when I'm baking because I feel like when you use the really dark, it makes your, um, your dish really, really dark, and that's not what I'm looking for. So we're gonna use one third cup of pumpkin puree, just like so, in with the butter, and make sure that your butter is softened. It has to be room temperature and softened, all right? So just take it out, you know, early, early that morning and just let it set on the counter and get room temperature. It doesn't take long at all. And then we're going to put the zest of your orange, your mandarin orange, like I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna get all of the zest and I wanna make sure that I don't grab any of the pith. The pith is the white that's in the inside. We don't want that because it'll make it really sour. Okay, just the zest only, just like so. Beautiful. Just like this, that smells amazing. This is screaming fall time. I love, I am a sucker for fall time flavors. The cinnamon, the vanilla, the nutmeg, the ginger, it's just beautiful. The pumpkin flavor, sweet potato. That right there is right up my alley when fall time comes. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more zest. And that right there is gonna do the trick. And then, now for the white chocolate chips. You can put as much chocolate chips as you would like to. I'm gonna start off with a half a cup, and once I mix it, I'm gonna see if I'm happy with that. If I'm not, I'm just gonna put some more in. Okay, it's really up to your discretion how much you would like to have in your filling. Now, it doesn't have to be white chocolate chips. You can use butterscotch, you can use chocolate, Absolutely you can. So for this recipe, it calls for one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. You all know me, you know I like to eyeball my stuff. I know how much I'm gonna need, so I'm just gonna put some in, but if you want a correct measurement for this, it'll be one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Just like so. It's gonna give you an amazing smell, amazing flavor as well. And then we're gonna go in with our ground ginger. And this is just a half a teaspoon of the ground ginger. I need to open it up first. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to put a half a teaspoon of ground ginger in. All right, just like so. I'm not gonna to put too much. Just like so. And then for the ground nutmeg. You all that are familiar with me and you know me, you know that I'm really not a fan of nutmeg but I'm gonna use it because this recipe needs it. But I'm not gonna to use too much. You're gonna need a half a cup of your nutmeg. I need to open this one as well. Nutmeg going in, just like so. 
beautiful beautiful smells and now this caramel i'm going to show you what we're going to do special with this caramel it does not go into this but i'll show you when we're going to use it once we roll our dough out okay so now i'm just going to start going in with my soft rubber spatula you want to mix everything in until everything gets well incorporated and this right here is the amazing filling it did not require a lot of ingredients it's so easy but the filling is so tasty when you taste it you know you have that pumpkin you have that beautiful brown sugar all of these fall spices and not to mention the chocolate morsels oh my goodness so i'm gonna mix this up really well and i'll be right back now that everything is nice and well incorporated give it a taste if you like see what it tastes like it's amazing oh mm, you can really taste the orange zest mm, it's so good you can taste the pumpkin it tastes like a pumpkin pie filling sort of it's beautiful so now we can just set this aside you don't have to set it in your refrigerator or anything like that. Just set it aside. Now, here in about 40 minutes, we'll go over and we'll take a look at our beautiful dough that should be rising under the towel. And then I'll be back. Okay, everybody, it's time to make a really quick and simple, amazing cream cheese icing that I love to make. Now, the okay so the recipe that i've given you all for the glaze is four ounces of cream cheese softened one fourth cup of salted butter softened make sure your butter softened one and a half cups of powdered sugar a half teaspoon of vanilla and one to two tablespoons of whole milk now i'm gonna make more because I'm gonna use this icing. Let me show you what I'm gonna use it for. I want some extra icing because later on tonight, I have something fun that me and Dakota were go are gonna do. We have these cookies here that me and him, we're just gonna sit down and decorate them. And they come with pre-filled, um, you know, you can see the different colors and they got sprinkles and things like that. There's 16 cookies in here. Me and him are going to decorate cookies and sip on some apple cider tonight by the fireplace. So that's what me and him are going to do. And so my reason for making extra icing today is for that reason. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I have a little bit extra butter. I'm just going to throw that in there. But I'm going to use to make the extra icing. I'm going to use a half a cup of butter, okay? I'm going to use eight ounces of cream cheese, vanilla, and four cups of powdered sugar. This is salted. This is salted um, butter. I like to make my icing always with salted butter. I think it tastes better. Get you some vanilla in there. Your eight ounces of cream cheese just like so. Make sure that your cream cheese and butter is soft, okay? We're gonna measure out four cups of powdered sugar just like so. Hold on guys, I'm trying not to make a mess here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start to blend this up. I'm gonna do it off camera because this right here is a little bit loud. Okay, and then I'll come back and show you exactly how much milk you're going to need. Okay, I have everything somewhat mixed up. I'm going to put one tablespoon of milk in, and then you'll see if you need another tablespoon, okay? But right now, one tablespoon is going to do the trick, and if it doesn't, put a little bit more extra in. Okay, everybody, you can see that our icing is coming together. It's starting to get nice, beautiful, and nice and smooth. And you better believe it's so tasty. Okay, so what I did have to do, I did have to go in with another tablespoon of milk to get it to the consistency that I want. Let me show you this, guys. I have to. Look at that. Look how nice, velvety, and smooth it is. And it's so tasty. I have to, guys. Taste that. <laughs> right off my finger. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. You better believe it's so doggone good. My goodness. Mm. And so now that I'm looking at it, I might not have enough icing for me and Dakota, but that's okay. I can just whip up some 
before we get ready to decorate our cookies. I'm gonna to continue to mix this a little bit more to, to make sure that I don't have any lumps. I'll be back. Okay, so the pan size that we're gonna use will be a nine by 12. And you wanna make sure that you take the time to oil your pan. I like to get the sides and the bottom lightly oiled. I think I might have put a little bit too much oil. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and get the extra oil out of the pan, just like so. Okay, beautiful. Okay, everybody, Prince and Polo want to say hi to you. They have their little shirts on because it's cool outside and they're gonna go on a little walk. Say hi, Prince and Polo, say hi, guys. They're so well-mannered, look at them. <laughs> So I washed her face this morning, I combed their hair, put their little shirts on, and they are ready to go. And I think that they're waiting on these pumpkin rolls. They can smell them and they keep barking. <laughs> okay, everybody, so it's been an hour. Our dough has risen. Look how beautiful. That's what it should look like. Okay, so it has doubled in size. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it right out we're gonna take it right out of the bowl, okay? And I have washed my counter thoroughly so that my counter is impeccably clean. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take just a little bit, just a little bit, guys, don't get crazy with the flour, okay? Because you don't need a whole lot. Just a little bit, and we're gonna brush a little bit of flour onto our counter. Because now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our dough, you wanna roll it out to a rectangle, really quick and simple. I'm gonna take a little bit of flour and put a little bit of that flour right onto my rolling pin. I'm just gonna start rolling. This dough is so forgiving. It's so easy to work with, it's not hard. And honestly, if you don't have a rolling pin, you could use a glass you know, or a cylinder shaped, you know, some type of cylinder shaped cup and you can do this. Just make a rectangle, all right? Just like so, when I get my rectangle, I'll come back. Okay, everyone, now that we have everything looking somewhat like a rectangle, <laughs> now it's time to put your beautiful filling in there, okay? And if you want more filling than what I call for in this recipe, all you have to do is just put you some more brown sugar in there and some more, um, of the morsels, the white chocolate morsels. Now what I like to do, here's how I like to do it. You wanna leave some edge, okay, so that you can roll it. Spread this out nice and thinly. Take your time, no rushing, okay? Everything that I make in this kitchen is so easy, and you all can do this as well. You better believe you can. Use all of this filling, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna make an amazing pumpkin cinnamon roll. Okay, now that we have our filling on, now it's time to drizzle if you want to. The caramel is optional, but I love it on there. Every time I make these, I have to put it on there. Drizzle you some caramel, just like so, all throughout, oh yeah, get it on there. All throughout these beautiful pumpkin cinnamon rolls and you are gonna have a party in your mouth. Mm, mm, mm. You better make yourself my mouth. <laughs> Guys, I know your mouth has to be watering because my mouth is watering so bad right now. Okay, I wanna put a little bit right here, just a little bit. And like I said, this caramel is definitely optional. You don't have to use it if you didn't want to. Beautiful. Mm. All right, there's that. Well, now I'm gonna show you how quick and simple it is to roll these. You wanna take the long side, not the short side. You wanna take the long side and just Start to roll it, okay? It will roll up for you. And I like to, some people like to roll theirs up loosely. I like to make mine nice and tight. Nice and tight is the way to go when you're making your cinnamon rolls because you don't want the top to go wild and crazy. Sometimes the top can pop out too far. And it might pop out with mines, but I like to just make this nice and tight. Some people say roll it loosely. Some people say don't roll it too tight. <laughs> it's really up to your discretion. It's your 
pumpkin cinnamon rolls. I'm gonna to continue to do this, and then when I seal the side, I'm just gonna literally just take my fingers and seal this up to this. Okay, so now that we're at that part, what I'm gonna do, watch this. Just connect it. Nothing hard, and somebody say, oh my gosh, the filling is coming out, what do I do? You don't do anything. <laughs> don't worry about it, it's okay. It's gonna happen, don't worry about that, all right? No worries in the kitchen. I will do all the worries in the kitchen for you. You better believe I will. Okay, so now we have everything nice and rolled up. I'm satisfied with it. What I do, I always cut the ends off. You can cut the ends off and bake it for the kids, you know, or you can just eat on it. However, after you bake it, make sure you bake it. But I don't use the ends because it doesn't give me a nice, beautiful cinnamon roll. So I'm going to start to cut these. When you cut them, you want to use a serrated knife. It has to look like this. It's going to help you to cut that dough. Cut the edges off. Okay? Like I said, bake it or get rid of it. All right? What you want to do... Make sure your knife is nice and clean, and you go in, and you cut each one. You wanna make sure that they're nice and thick, and you're gonna put it into your greased baking dish. And when we put it into our, bit, look at that. Oh, look at that. You put it in there. It needs to rise for at least a half an hour before we bake them. We're gonna bake these on 350 degrees. For around about 25 minutes, you keep an eye on them because these can burn very quickly. I'm going to con continue to cut the others and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, now what we have to do is we need to let these rolls rise again. Since you cut down in them, into them, they deflate a little bit. So you want to let them rise for a half an hour. Then we're going to put them in that oven 350 degrees on the middle rack and you're going to have amazing pumpkin rolls Gina Young style. I'll come back after these rise, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put a loosely towel, just as we did earlier, right on top so that these can rise. Okay, everybody, take a look. They have risen for a half an hour. The oven has preheated to 350 degrees. Middle rack, 18 to 20 minutes. Keep an eye on them. You don't want them to get too dark golden brown. When they come out, I'll let you know how long they cooked. We're going to say a beautiful prayer over these bad boys. We're going to glaze them with this beautiful icing. Be back. Okay, everyone, while our pumpkin cinnamon rolls bake in the oven, let's go ahead and say our prayer because as soon as these come out the oven, I'm going to be ready to dive in. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. We thank you for your blessings, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your gentle kindness. We thank you for blessing over this household. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the joy, and the peace that you bring us daily. Once again, I thank you for this beautiful dessert. Amen. Now, I know I was supposed to do this video yesterday, but um, time got behind me. Yesterday, we went out at 10 in the morning. Me and my husband, we went out on the town. We went to the mall. We ran a bunch of errands, and we didn't go, get home until 9.30 p.m., so I apologize for that, but you won't be let down. This video is worth the wait. Okay, everybody, it has been exactly 20 minutes. The pumpkin cinnamon rolls are done. My whole house smells good. And everybody has been waiting so patiently for these right here. Look at this, beautiful. I can't pick it up because it's so hot. Look down in there at that gooeyness that you get, that ooey gooeyness that you get from the filling and also the... Um, what is it called, guys? Right on the end of my tongue. Um, from the caramel. Try the caramel. Look at this. Now, here's what we're going to do. You want to let these rest for a few minutes. When I say a few minutes, maybe a good 10 minutes to where they're just barely nice and warm. And then we can spread our amazing icing that we made all over these nice, beautiful, warm pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Be back. Amen to my beautiful prayer if I didn't already say amen. Okay, everyone, time to put our beautiful icing right on top, just like so. 
And remember, these are nice and warm. So this icing is going to go on there just perfectly. Hoo-wee, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. You all never made these before. You better make you some. Gina Young style. If y'all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Jeannie Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know all about Jeannie Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night, but not before. We give this a try. We're going to taste this, but I got to wait at least five minutes before I grab one out. We'll give it a taste, and I'm going to let you all know what they taste like. Look at this. Make you some. Gina Young style. Hoo It's fall time around here. Mm, mm, mm. Girl, you are something else in that kitchen. I'm going right in for this one right here. Just take a spatula, get it out in that manner. Look at that right there. Look at this beautifulness. Be look at the bottom. Oh, look at the bottom. Ha! Hooey. We have cut down into, look how beautiful. We've cut down into this beautiful cinnamon roll, pumpkin cinnamon roll. Taste that and let me know what you all think. Mm, mm, mm. Hurry up, guys. I am so ready to dive in. Look how beautiful. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, mommy. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. There's that ooey gooey middle that we all love. Look at that. Look how beautiful. Mm. And the roll itself is amazing. My goodness. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night. Look at that. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to grab me a glass of milk and enjoy this. Whoo, good night. Mm.